OK, flying through it. Question 7 now. The diagram shows the curve y equals f of x, where f is the function defined by our values by that. State the range of f. Well, hang on. We know that an e to the x graph has an asymptote at the x-axis. This is an e to the x graph that is stretched by 4 units and then lifted up. So this line here, that's the asymptote, I've drawn it too high, but that line there must be 3. So the range of this, we must write it in terms of y or f of x. f of x is greater than 3, or y is greater than 3. One mark. Find an expression for the inverse and state the domain and range. Hang on, that's the range of that one. Right. Uh, the domain was all real values. So they're going to swap for this question. Now, the inverse of this, what we do is we set y as being that, and we need to rearrange this function to get x in terms of y. So y minus 3 is 4 e to the minus x. y minus 3 over 4 is e to the minus x. Take logs of both sides. Natural log of y minus 3 over 4 is minus x. So um, we're going to bring that over. And we're going to say, therefore, x is minus the natural log of y minus 3 over 4. Um, so the inverse function is minus ln x minus 3 over 4. You may feel that you don't like that minus sign in there, so you might write it as being ln 4 over x minus 3, because, of course, the, that power would go up there as a power of minus 1, so it would be the reciprocal. Um, the range of the inverse is the same as the domain of the original, which was stated as being all real values of x. So the inverse has a range of all real numbers. The domain of the inverse is the same as the range of the original function, so it is x greater than 3. There we are. Part 3, the straight line y equals x meets the curve at the point P by using an iterative process based on the equation what x equals f of x and a starting value of 3, find the coordinates of the point P. So our iterative process is going to be x equals 3 plus 4e to the minus x. So x n plus 1 is 3 plus 4e to the minus x n. We were told that x... 1, our starting value, x1 or x0 if you want to call it that, um, is going to be 3. So we need to show each step of this. This is 3 plus 4e to the minus 3. Uh, 3 plus 4e to the minus 3 is 3.199. 9914848. But hang on, remember we've got this way of doing this, haven't we? So we're going to put 3 in, and then we're going to do 3 plus 4e to the minus ants. And you see that gives us the same value. Now, if we press it again, this gives us x3. It's 3.1631. How many did I do there? 88. Um, eight x4, 3.169163, x5, 3.168155. We're looking for three decimal places, and we're not there yet. So x, what was that, was that x5? x6 is... Um, 3.168324. Look at this, we've got 3.168 now appearing in consecutive iterations. If we want to, we can do one final one just to make sure. 3.168296. I'm happy with 3.168. So x is 3.168. Uh, are we done? Oh! Find the coordinates, plural, of the point P. So that's both X and Y coordinates. So, well, it's, it's the way it meets the line Y equals X. So Y is 
8 as well. So they are our coordinates. We need to state both, don't we? There we are. Uh, part 4. How is the point P related to the curves? Y equals f of x and y equals the inverse function of f of x. Well, um, for a function and its inverse, the line y equals x is the line of symmetry. So P is the point, is the point that f of x and its inverse meet. It's the point of intersection. There we go. And that's maths.